Hello, I'm Darren McGain. The topic for today's video comes from questions asking about neglect in narcissistic relationships. Some of those questions include, what's the difference between abuse and neglect? When does neglect become abuse? And what would the common signs of neglect in a relationship be? Another question is, what are the long-term effects of being neglected? So there is quite a lot to cover, so I've decided to break this video into two parts. In this video, I'm going to address the first three questions. In the next video, I'm going to look at the long-term effects of being neglected in a relationship. So if you find this video interesting or helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel. I would like to say firstly that all of us can be a bit absent-minded at times. Sometimes we can be preoccupied. We might forget something that we have promised or forget something that is important to someone else. That's not neglect, nor is not giving someone what they want, what they demand, all day and every day. That's not neglect either, even though some narcissistic people might claim that it is. And also, some people might lack empathy, but for many different reasons. They might not genuinely understand why something is important to someone, or they might not pick up on social cues. They might not understand why someone feels the way they do but they might actually genuinely struggle. They might even blame themselves for not understanding, for not getting it. So to answer the first question, abuse is an act of commission. It involves inflicting pain, hurt, controlling, causing misery, all to control and coerce another person. There is intent there. The abuser does it for their own benefit, for their own gratification. A common indicator that there is intent it's when a person is asked to stop behaving the way they do, there is no change. They just keep on doing it. Neglect, however, that's an act of omission. It's not doing anything. It's not providing or meeting someone's, well, even their basic needs. It's withholding attention, affection, and resources. And when it comes to narcissism, it can be difficult to discern if there is intent there or not. I guess it really depends on the person, how strong those narcissistic traits are. There's never really a one-size-fits-all answer. So it can be difficult to know sometimes if they really genuinely don't understand or if they just don't care or even if they actually enjoy it. But if there is intent, then they know exactly what they're doing. And I think what we would see there is what's known as dark empathy. They know what they're doing and they know the effect it has. So when it comes to narcissistic neglect, at the beginning of a relationship, a narcissistic person, they may be very charismatic, caring, attentive, but that begins to lessen over time as the relationship progresses. Now, the love and affection may lessen, may be less frequent, but it doesn't disappear entirely. Sometimes it becomes conditional. And here we see the forming of a trauma bond. Now, I've made videos on trauma bonding previously, if you'd like to check those out. But as the relationship progresses, the narcissistic person might become bored, disinterested, the partner doesn't hold the excitement that they once did. So the narcissist now has new interests, maybe work, new friendships, hobbies. These things become much more interesting and take up much more of their time. And even though the narcissistic person stays in the relationship, they put little to no effort into it. Now, although the following could apply to any kind of relationship with a narcissistic person, I will refer to a long-term relationship between a person with very strong narcissistic traits and a partner who doesn't. And the following would be happening pretty much all of the time, not just once in a while. So some of the signs of narcissistic neglect would first of all be they're constantly working, they're constantly busy. Now this could be their job, it could be their career, it could be voluntary work, some community-based work they're doing. Whatever it is, they never seem to have enough time or energy for the partner. And if it's a work-related thing, if they are really, really focused on their career, they may say that they're doing it to provide for the partner and for the family, and this could well be true. In many cases, they may think that is what makes a good partner, but it's at the expense of the emotional well-being of the partner, sometimes even the kids. So what we often see is a good standard of living, but a poor quality of life. Secondly, they may be constantly distracted, distant, always preoccupied. They appear more interested in other people and other things than the partner like their mind always seems to be elsewhere. If the partner wants to talk about something personal, something important, they might just listen for a bit before talking about something else, changing the subject. Or if the partner is talking about their problems, well, the narcissistic person might claim to be pragmatic, level-headed, more solution-focused. So they want to deal with the problem 
without actually paying attention to what the problem is or perhaps even acknowledging why it's a problem. They just offer solutions and they could be solutions that maybe involve the partner just having to accept it or the partner having to do something themselves alone, not necessarily one that involves them having to contribute anything. Which leads me on to the third kind of neglect. There's no closeness or no intimacy. Now, narcissists do tend to struggle with intimacy. They only ever really have surface level relationships, surface level conversations. They tend to avoid difficult conversations or difficult situations that might bring up a level of closeness, a level of intimacy. It's like they see the partner as a drain on their time and energy. What the partner might want or need is of little to no relevance to them. It's not on their radar and it is not their responsibility to provide it. Number four is poor communication. It is never a good time to talk, never mind talk about anything important. If they're having an argument, if the same things keep coming up over and over again, the narcissistic person might try to just shut down the conversation by acknowledging what it is or even giving a half-hearted apology. That might sound something like, yeah, yeah, if it's that important to you, then I'm sorry. Okay, now are you happy? And that's not really apology. That's more dismissive and even contemptuous, I'd say. Another aspect of communication is listening. So we maybe don't listen to the partner, perhaps half listen at best. They might be dismissive, keep changing the subject, don't answer any questions or maybe answer a completely different question. So nothing is ever really discussed properly, nothing is ever really resolved. And on that communication, there is the silent treatment. What little attention there is may be withdrawn further until the partner gives in. It's quite a passive aggressive form of punishment. It's ignoring someone exists, not acknowledging them, maybe answering through grunts, showing indifference, or perhaps even making grandiose gestures of attention to, with other people to reinforce their displeasure at their partner. Next is showing the partner that they are at the bottom of the line when it comes to priorities. They would step over their struggling partner to go and help everyone else. Now narcissists generally do seek attention and validation, but a neglectful narcissist, they'll look for it elsewhere. They could have no interest in any flattery, goodwill gestures or praise from the partner. It's like it means nothing to them. Some might even flirt or cheat with others. Any attention from the partner is just not enough. This can leave people feeling worthless. The next sign of neglect is indifference. A narcissistic person has no interest in anything that happens to the partner, whether that's good or bad. Now, they might not be overly critical. They might not take any real joy or pleasure at the partner's difficulties, but they just have no interest. The partner could be really upset, could even be crying themselves to sleep. A narcissistic person doesn't really care as long as they don't get disturbed and they're able to fall asleep okay. They might show little to no curiosity about any hobbies, passions, fears or friendships that their partner has, but they also show little to no interest in any of the partner's successes or achievements. They don't congratulate them, they don't discuss them, they don't share the good news with other people. It's like it's not worth mentioning. Sign number eight is, whatever the partner is going through, they are left to struggle and suffer alone. There is no empathy, no support, no compassion. For the narcissist, it's just a normal day. Things go on as usual. The partner asks for help or support, they may be rejected with things like, it's your issue, you sort it out, or look within yourself for the answer, or, you know what, just try not to think about it. The partner gets nothing from them at all. Next is, when other people are around, the narcissistic person might be the heart and soul of the party. They're laughing, joking, sharing good ideas and offering suggestions. The partner is perhaps left alone in the corner. Now to the partner, maybe they arrive together in silence, they're going to go home together in silence. But while they're there, maybe they have to hear everybody tell them what a great person their partner is. And lastly, number 10, anything the partner asks for is refused, it's rejected. The same with anything the partner offers, it's refused, it's rejected. Whatever the partner does get, it's what the narcissist offers them, it's what they want and it's on their terms, when it suits them. So the narcissistic person might give their partner what they think they want, but not necessarily what they need. Now when they do do something kind, maybe give some magnanimous, generous birthday gift or whatever, they might have difficulty understanding why the partner is not excited, why they're not overly grateful. Because that gift doesn't necessarily undo the emotional pain and loneliness that they're going through. It's 
some narcissistic people might actually get quite angry that the partner isn't showing enough gratitude and appreciation. With the constant refusals, I think what we see here is both the disagreeable side of narcissism, but also their fear of any kind of vulnerability. Narcissists tend to despise vulnerability. Sometimes they exploit it in others. They say almost everything as a competition, a power struggle. So to give somebody something that they have asked for might feel as if they're having to give something up. So it is refused or rejected unless it's on their terms. Then they get to keep a sense of control. My final thoughts on narcissistic neglect. Sometimes it's like everything is fine with them. So they don't understand why the partner seems to be struggling. Now, as I said earlier, they might genuinely not understand. They might not care. Sometimes we're dealing with someone who's on that dark personality. There's a sadistic element there. So they may actually enjoy the pain that the partner's going through. I guess it really depends on the individual and where they are on that narcissistic spectrum. But either way, the partner is left feeling devalued and dehumanized. So in the second part of this video, I'm going to look at the long-term effects of being emotionally neglected in a long-term narcissistic relationship. But if there are any kinds of neglect I haven't mentioned, by all means, please feel free to use the comment box below. There are some interesting conversations and ideas shared. But if you find this video interesting, please consider subscribing to my channel. And until next time, thanks for watching.